Um, so starting right from the beginning, um, just a quick intro in terms of what Cambridge will offer um, to your students. We are a very well ranked university. Um, we are consistently ranked in the top 10 in the world. I think we're at the minute we're kind of top three in the QS rankings. Um, we're also a very supportive environment to students. Um, we are very academically intensive. Um, there's not really getting away from that. So students who come to Cambridge do need to be prepared to study and work quite hard at times. Um, but the university does provide a lot of support. Um, we're also very fortunate in that our degree prospects, our degrees are very well regarded, not just in the UK, but internationally. Um, so we rank extremely highly for employer reputation. Being a Cambridge graduate does um, enable students to have access to kind of a wide range of career options. Um, there's obviously support internally with that in terms of our career service. Um, but our alumni network is, is very powerful as well. In terms of a student's experience of a college, um, how they'll experience it is that as well as being a member of the whole University of Cambridge, um, they'll also be a member of one particular Cambridge college. Um, they do have the option to choose that college when they apply as well. Um, and that college will kind of provide them with all the facilities they would expect from their university. Um, so that is where um, their accommodation will be, that's provided by the college. Um, that college also provides study facilities, so each college has at least one library, it will have uh, co computer rooms and kind of other places that students can study. Um, and they also do provide a lot of the student support as well, so our students tutors are located in the same college as them. They'll have an academic tutor called a director of studies. Um, their non-academic or pastoral tutor called a personal tutor. One of the other things that is sort of fairly specific to Cambridge as well, although again um, they have something relatively similar at Oxford, um, is our kind of emphasis on small group or one-to-one -one teaching, um, which varies a bit depending on subject, but can be anything from one student to three or four students uh, with one academic. Uh, we find this a really beneficial way to teach. We think the students get a lot out of it because um, they get that kind of contact time with academics built into the syllabus, into the timetable. They get a chance to sort of ask all the questions they might have, which you obviously can't ask 10 questions in a lecture without kind of annoying the rest of the class. Um, you can kind of do that in the supervision and you really can tailor them to uh, the parts of the course that a student is particularly interested in. To sum it up very briefly in one sentence, we tend to say that we're looking for the brightest and best students irrespective of their background. So we don't mind where they come from in terms of what school type, you know, what religion they are, what social background, where in the world they're from. So we have no international quotas whatsoever with the exception of the medicine course, which has a government quota. Um, but we just want those um, kind of bright, amazing students wherever they come from. Um, the key thing that we're looking at is their academic ability and potential. So it is an academic based admission. We're not necessarily looking for all rounders in the way that you know many US institutions might be. Um, we're focusing in really on that academic side of things. Um, our entry requirements are very high. We don't sort of make any pretense that they're not. Um, so we are looking at um, for A level, A star AA for arts and humanities, um, A star A star A for um, STEM courses and economics. IB we're talking 40 to 42 out of 45 um, with 776 in the higher level. So obviously that is very much going to be at the upper end of what any of your students are achieving. The key things to know is that applications are considered individually, um, so we're not comparing, we don't sit around with kind of multiple students in front of us and, and we're not saying should we have this one or this one, um, every application is looked at individually. Um, we do look at all information before we make decisions, so we don't make decisions you know, just based on interview performance or just based on test scores, um, we will look at the whole applicant. Um, so you may see it referred to as holistic, although it's not holistic in the US sense um, because we're only really looking at the academic side of the student. What we are looking at is their supercurriculars and supercurriculars is a term for extracurriculars that relate to the course that a student is applying to. But they might do some reading 
that relates to their course, they might do a little bit of extra research, a kind of a summer project or something. They might uh, listen to a relevant podcast. They might take a, an online course um, that relates to their subject. They might visit a museum or gallery um, that kind of relates to the field that they're hoping to go into. And so yeah, the reason that we like to see these is, as I said, it demonstrates the subject interest, but it also can help students with things like developing research skills, um, broadening and deepening their knowledge and showing us that they can work independently as well um, and can be self-motivated. So it's not a teacher telling them to do these things, it is coming from the student themselves. Um, 4,000 characters, so not too long, um, but we're looking for a professional insight from the counsellor or teacher um, into an applicant's academic performance and potential. Um, subject teacher reports, so it's very common that um, the subject teachers will kind of feed into the reference and then the counsellor will potentially put that all together because it's only one reference that we're asking for in the UK. Um, so starting with the most relevant subject first, so if they're applying to engineering, it's going to be the maths and physics teachers that are going to be providing the bulk of this information. Um, do let us know areas that they're particularly strong in. Um, and a bit of context as well. So um, if you can give us an idea how strong this student is in relation to their peers, are they top 10 in that cohort? Are they the, the top student in that subject in that cohort? Are they you know, the best student you've seen in 10 years? Um, and then at the end, um, usually commenting on the suitability for the course and for higher education. So just sort of whether you recommend the student um, for this particular programme. Just to highlight the interviews, again, making very clear those are going to be online. Um, international interviews are going to be taking place, but those will also be online. Um, so if you are in a time zone which is um, seven hours or more ahead of the UK, so GMT plus seven to GMT plus 13, um, we're doing some international interviews um, kind of separately so that we can try and accommodate these at a convenient time for your students.